what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray about this curse of Tecumseh. If you don't know what it is, it's also called the zero-year curse, or and it's also called uh, some other things, but uh, the Tippecanoe curse. So what happened is this man named William Harrison, uh, he was put in charge of managing uh, some Indian lands, and he negotiated to transfer ownership of a large quantity of land to the United States government. And one particular chieftain named Tecumseh felt that Harrison had used uh, illegitimate tactics, unfair tactics, in negotiating this. And so there was bad blood between the two men. Now, Tecumseh also had a brother named Tenskwatawa. And Tenskwatawa was a, an Indian prophet. So Harrison, at some point, uh, after different talks and attempts at peace fail between the two groups, Harrison arrives with an army. Now, it seems that Harrison had ambitions to become president, and the Indians knew this. And so he arrived, and Tecumseh is not at, in Prophetstown. He's elsewhere, because Tecumseh did a lot of traveling, trying to recruit uh, other warriors, fighting men, other families, I suppose, to come and join him at Prophetstown, because Tecumseh's position was that the land belonged to everyone, and it was for the common use, and that uh, Harrison, and by extension the American government, didn't really have a right to negotiate with one particular tribe to then claim ownership of a piece of land, and that they instead needed an agreement from every Indian tribe that might possibly want to use that land at any time in the future. So, which basically meant, uh, amounted to an impossible task for the American government. So they didn't want it. They didn't want to deal with Tecumseh. So they just tried to, wanted to bypass him. And Harrison rides out with this army and they negotiate with Tenskwatawa that they're going to uh, meet the next day. But in the night, the, the Native American warriors attack Harrison's troops. Harrison won the battle, and the next day, the Indians were cleaned out of Prophetstown, except for one old lady, so the story is written, and the American army destroyed the town. They just leveled it, took everything apart, dismantled it. So, Tinsquatawa then puts this curse on Harrison. If you become president... You and your fellow president in a zero year, a year that ends in the number zero, dies in office. Either in that term or the next term or a subsequent term, they die in office. And the list is extensive. I just want to uh, go through this list to read. So in 1840, William Harrison gets, comes into office and dies in a month from typhoid. In 1860, Abraham Lincoln. 1880, James Garfield assassinated. 1900, William McKinley assassinated. 1920, Warren G. Harding dies of a heart, at a heart attack or a stroke. Uh, people are not certain. It's debated. Warren G. Harding, oh, the, I just mentioned him. 1940, Franklin D. Roosevelt dies of a cerebral hemorrhage. In 1960, John F. Kennedy is assassinated. In 1980, now this is where it gets interesting. Someone attempted to kill Ronald Reagan, but failed. In the year 2000, George W. Bush, uh, this is less commonly known, but he was visiting Saakashvili in the nation of Georgia, and there was an assassination attempt. A man threw a grenade. Uh, he had pulled the pin, and fortunately it was wrapped in cloth, and the lever didn't release. So this, it was a live grenade, but it failed to detonate. And so the bird by wondering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless, shall not come. So what was the cause? How can this curse, if it's true that this Tenskwatawa put a curse on the American presidential seat, how could it possibly have landed? Because they cheated them in a land deal. This is the accusation. And since it landed, apparently that seems to verify that yes, in fact, uh, there were some Ill, Ill, illegit methods being used or employed that there, the land was stolen from some of the people who did not give an agreement because the agreements were made only with a subset of the, of the people who used the different territories that were taken over by Harrison. So now, how long does a curse last? Well, the curse, the closest curse I could... He, this battle happened in 1809. 
and Tecumseh was killed in 1811 at Tippecanoe. So if you add 150 years to there, you get about 1959 or 1961, depending upon where you go, because it's said that after Tecumseh's death, like that's when Tenskwatawa put the curse, but it's really unclear, it's really vague. So there's you know, a couple of years, you know, plus or minus going on here. So now, uh, the first president after 1961 uh, was Reagan. So uh, Kennedy came in in 60 and he was assassinated, but Reagan lived. So it looks like maybe this curse didn't, uh, is no longer in effect. But what I want to do is for you to join me in prayer uh, that we will pray to repent for the sins of the fathers. That as Americans, uh, we can pray to repent and then also to break this curse. So what I want to do is use basically the format that Daniel used. So Daniel also understood that the curse of, of the people was 70 years in captivity. And he understood that the time had elapsed. So now what I'm saying is it looks like it has been three or four generations. Because even if you consider four generations of 50 years, that's only till 2011. So there's plenty of room here to say the curse is fulfilled. And we can now repent for as Daniel came before, before you, Lord as a captive in Babylon. And we pray, almighty and righteous God, that you will hear our prayers and supplications. We ask you, Father, to forgive us, Lord, for sinning against you uh, as the descendants of Americans. We ask you, Father, to forgive us for the sins of our American forefathers uh, by cheating land deals with Native Americans. Father, we understand that not everything was done legitimately, that lands were taken without full agreements, and this sin is against you, man, but we put our trust in you. And this is what our Father should have done. And we ask you alone. And we ask you, Almighty God, to put peace between the American people and the descendants of the Shawnee and the descendants of the tribes who were robbed and wrongly mistreated. We ask you, Almighty God, to forgive us, Father, for the sins of our forefathers. We ask you, O great King, to strengthen our resolve to put you first and to put your name first, Almighty King. We ask you, O great God, to strengthen our resolve in serving you and in trusting in you. We ask you, O great King, to watch over us and to strengthen us. You, Father, are the one who keeps us safe. You, Father, are the one who keeps us whole. There is none like you, Lord, and you are the one who watches over us. You are the one who makes us new. You, O great King, are the one who is able to heal the land. We ask you, Father, as you forgave Daniel's forefathers to forgive our forefathers and to forgive us and to lift this curse off our people, Lord. Although we know, Lord, that Daniel, that in Daniel's case, uh, the time of captivity had been fulfilled and that America is not now facing a time of redemption, but a time of judgment. But we ask you, Father, we know, Lord, that there is mercy, that even in judgment, there is mercy, as you showed us with King David. And we ask you, Father, to have mercy on us. We ask you, O oh great God, to have mercy on the American people. We ask you, Father, to have mercy on us and to put peace between us and the native people, Lord, who were wronged in land dealings. We ask you, O oh great and mighty King, to forgive us, Lord, and also to increase peace in the land. And we ask you, Father, to heal the land, O oh mighty God, that it will produce fruit in due season. And we ask you, Lord, not only for the fruits of agriculture, but for the fruits, Lord, of the Spirit. We pray, O mighty and righteous King, that you will bring revival into the land, the, amongst the native peoples, Father, and amongst all the American states, O mighty God, that you will bring about revivals, Lord, that people will turn from evil and turn to you, as Ezekiel told us is your heart. We ask you, Father, that there will be an increase in, re in repentance, that there will be an increase in turning away from wickedness and evil, and there will be an increase in turning toward you. We ask you, Almighty God, we thank you, Father, for this, for, for Donald Trump, Lord, a man who is standing up for Christianity, a man who honors the Christian way, a man who at least by appearances, is desiring to make America great again. We ask you, Almighty King, 
to remind the American people that, it will, that people will remember that the reason America is great is because we follow you and not man, because our trust is in you and not, as man, we, and not in man. We ask you, Almighty God, to bring about a remembrance, Father, that it is not capitalism f- for, as the basis of America's success, but your blessing, Almighty God, because of the prayers of your people, Father, because of your lavish giving, and because of your generosity, these are the reasons, Father, that America is blessed. And we ask you, Father, to bring about repentance and holiness. And we ask you, O great King, to forgive us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to forgive us, Father, for the sins of our forefathers in the way they dealt with uh, Tecumseh and Tenskwatawa and the Shawnee and the other Native Americans. We ask you, Almighty God, to put peace between us that there will be forgiveness, O mighty King, that people will remember the truth and the power of forgiveness, that there will be forgiveness and repentance and that the land will be healed. We pray, O mighty and righteous King, we pray, O mighty and righteous King, that you will bring about holiness and righteousness. And we pray, Father, that you will watch over Donald Trump and that you will protect him. We pray, O mighty and righteous God, that you will send your angels to surround him, O great King. And we ask you, Father, that if there is any traitor in his mix, Lord, that if there is any traitor, Lord, close to Donald Trump, we ask you, Father, that that man will be removed, that he will be exposed, Father. We ask you, Father, that he will be removed, Lord. If there is a betrayer in Donald Trump's cabinet, in his circle, in his proximity, who comes into contact with him, Lord, someone who might attempt to betray him or even kill him, Lord, we ask you, Father, to remove that person. We ask you, O great God, to protect Donald Trump, even from those close to him. We ask you, Father, to surround him with loyal, with loyal men, with loyal secret service men, Father. We ask you, O great King, to surround Donald Trump and protect him. And we ask you, Almighty God, by your power to protect him, Lord, from the curses of the enemy and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, using the power and authority given to us as children of God. We bind and break every hex, vex, or curse, every curse put upon Donald Trump, by Tenskwatawa, or by the Shawnee, or any other person, by witches and Wiccans and white witches and New Agers and sorcerers and magicians and Freemasons and Democrats, we ask you, Almighty God, to bind and break every curse, either issued as an intentional curse or just by people who curse without understanding what they do, Father. We bind and break every hateful word, every derogatory sentence, we bind and break it in the name of Jesus every dark thing spoken against him, every mixing curse and matching curse, every curse using effigies or waters or mixes or potions, we bind and break in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray the blood of Jesus over Donald Trump. We pray the blood of Jesus over every leader in any federal, state, or municipal district We pray, Almighty God, that for every leader that is loyal to you, that you will protect them, and that for those who are not loyal, Lord, that you will remove them. We pray, Father, that all those with secret agendas will be exposed, and that you, O great King, will protect those who are righteous, that you will give righteous hearts and righteous intentions, Lord, to the existing leadership. And we pray, Father, that you will give them wisdom, Lord, to protect us from our enemies. We pray, O great and mighty God, that your name will be glorified and elevated in the United States. We pray, O great King, that you will be elevated, that you will be in the first place, that people will put their trust in you and understand that there is no need to negotiate and to cheat, that there is no need to steal by force, that for those whose trust is in you, that we know that you provide for us, Lord, that you are our provider, that you are Jehovah Jireh, the God who sees our need. We know, Lord, that you are the one who strengthens. We know, Father, that you are the one who lifts up And no curse issued forth by man is more powerful than your word. But we know, Lord, that no curse can land without a cause. And so we repent, Father. We have repented now, Lord. We have repented in the name of Jesus. We have apologized to you, Father, for you are the one who we have sinned against most greatly because we trusted in guns and swords instead of trusting in your provision, instead of trusting in your lavish giving. We ask you, Almighty God, to remove every curse on the presidential seat of the United States. We ask you, Father, to remove this curse of Tecumseh, to remove the zero-year curse. We ask you, Almighty God, to remove the curse of Tippecanoe, Father. This curse, by any name that it has received or been given, we bind and break it in the name of Jesus. And we command any spirit of death, 
any spirit of attempted assassination, any, t- any spirit of typhoid or death by disease, any spirit of cerebral hemorrhage, or any spirit that attacks the organs or the flesh in any way, we bind you in the name of Jesus. And we command you to depart from the Oval Office, to depart and to leave Donald Trump, to depart and to leave the Trump family and the Trump household and all his line. We, we command you to depart forever the high office of the United States president. We bind every evil spirit, every hex, vex, and curse, and we command that every chain, snare, and trap be removed, that every boundary be ter- torn down, that any fence established around him or his, or his righteous works be removed and destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare all these things, and we command that every unclean spirit, that every dark spirit, every unholy spirit trying to work against Trump or his family, his, his faithful allies, his friends, in any way that the enemy might try to distract him, we bind and break all of these hexes, vexes, and curses and words spoken in anger and jealousy. We bind them and we command every unclean spirit to be removed from his environment in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, brothers and sisters, if you come here, I pray that uh, you will pray this and that you will continue to pray uh, for the protection of Donald Trump and for the President of the United States that... Uh, Any such man or woman will always be loyal and have Almighty God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as first place in their heart, and that the American people, and really uh, Christians living anywhere in the world, that they will put God first, that God will be the first place that they trust, uh, because that is the only way that things work. And the actions of uh, William Henry Harrison in dealing with the Native American people in signing lands with just a few tribes and not everyone who was on the land and then chasing out anyone who remained uh, by gun and sword. Uh, this was uh, a wrong. It was a wrong. And by searching the scriptures, I, I, I believe and, I'm, I, and I feel like, like that's correct, that it was basically the equivalent of moving a boundary stone, cheating your neighbor out of land that was rightfully his. And so this is how a curse could come in. That's, how, that's the cause of the curse. So I pray, Almighty God, I I pray, my friends, that uh, you will be blessed and that God will watch over you in all of your things. In Jesus' name, amen.